Yo, welcome to another episode of the Travel Podcast. I'm Joe Tap. Today's show, man, we got a great one lined up for you today. Um, when you come across the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video. Uh, make sure you turn your post notifications on so you know what's going to be all dropping drops of all the hot banger. Like I stated, uh, sports, hot topics, we do roundtable talk for a marriage crime. Um, Oh, my mantra is tell a friend to tell a friend. It might not be for you, but it might be for them. Um, I see everybody in the comments. Keep posting your comments. Um, hashtag salute. Um, like I said, before we get the show started, this show is sponsored by our new sponsor. Boho Chic Boutique is dedicated to the lovers of fashion. Specializing in bohemian chic handbags, accessories, and personal shopping. Visit Boho Chic Boutique at BohoChicTX.com. B O H O C H I C T X.com. I appreciate that on um, Boho Chic Boutique. Uh, y'all get with them for all your accessories, jewelry, and handbags. For today's show, man, um, it's getting real crucial now. It's getting real ugly from the position that um, Jason Whitlock is taken in trying to capitalize off of Deion Sanders' success um, after Saturday night's thriller against Colorado State. Um, Jason Whitlock produced a podcast today on his Fearless, and he had some things that, you know, he said that was really derogatory toward Deion Sanders. And all, all you guys know, you've been following the story. Um, you've heard all the comments and all the things that Jason Whitlock has said about Dion ever since he's taken over Colorado head coaching job and the way he goes about things, the way he's, you know, taking the spotlight, putting it on himself instead of, you know, on the kids. Everything's about Dion. He don't like the way Dion constructs his post-game press conferences. He likes nothing about Dion. But then I saw something that he went on one of his, you know, little reels or something said he supports Dion. He's wishing Dion for success. That's a fraud statement because you come out in one sense and say this and then go on your podcast and say this. Jason Whitlock can't have it both ways. And we're going to call you out on your on your fraud. Um, I know a lot of people in the comments saying, hey, you're wasting your time talking about Jason Whitlock. He's just trying to get a story. He's just get he's just getting everybody in the uproar. But Jason Whitlock has an opinion and I have an opinion as well. And I'm going to state my opinion. So everybody that's in the comments saying that I respect it, but I'm still going to state my opinion on how I feel about the situation. Now, this time, this this has taken a turn for the worse. Because after, like I stated, after the victory Saturday night when Colorado beat Colorado State, Jason Whitlock produced a show today with some derogatory comments on Deion Sanders, and it's getting real ugly. His choice of words are getting real ugly. And a lot of people are defending Jason Whitlock. I see all the comments, and a lot of people are not defending him. A lot of people saying Jason Whitlock is right. A lot of people saying Jason Whitlock is wrong. Everybody has an opinion. And I have my opinion too. And my opinion is that Jason Whitlock is a fraud himself. He's stating one thing and he goes out and does something totally different on his outside of his show, on his extracurricular time. He does things that are not godly. Now, y'all guys noticed in one segment, Jason Whitlock, you know, he tried to criticize Dion's Christian beliefs, beliefs. But then you had somebody that was on your show and you was downright slandering Dion Sanders' name in front of somebody that is a Christian as well but was stealing from the poor. I don't have to say no names. You know who I'm referencing. 
but he sat there and slandered Deion Sanders in front of that person, which is a Christian too, but you condoned what he did and you never made a story about them allegations that was hanging over Brett Favre's head. But you constantly want to come at Dion and say every negative thing after every victory that Dion has got this year. Three victories in a row, two more than last year's one in 11 team. But you come out and you state your comments after they got that victory last um, Saturday night. Guys, I want y'all to take a listen to what Jason Whitlock is up to now. And when we listen to it, I'll come back and I'll give you my take. Of Jackson, Mississippi, where he spent a little more than two years coaching at Jackson State University. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with Dion lying about his motivation and lying about the brutal tactics he used to overall the Colorado roster. Again, let's take a listen to Deion Sanders on 60 Minutes last night. Yes. No one is spewing and hearing more lies this football season than Deion Sanders. He's college football's golden calf an idol to be worshipped by sports broadcasters, social media influencers, and sports fans ruled by racial idolatry. He's won three, three major college football games, and people are hailing him as the modern-day Bear Bryant. It's a joke. The 19th-ranked Buffaloes are greatly overrated. In-state rival Colorado State outplayed them on Saturday and gave the game away with self-inflicted wounds. The transfer portal, NIL, and the total abandonment of, eth of ethics has fueled Colorado's so-called miraculous turnaround. You cannot compare what Deion Sanders is doing to the turnaround efforts of previous coaches because before the last two or three years, no coach had the opportunity to overhaul their entire roster in one season. Great coaches were tasked with the job of coaching the kids they inherited better than their predecessor. Let me walk you through that. Take Bill Snyder coming to Kansas State University in the early 1990s, I believe, or late 80s, I, I, late 80s, I believe. That guy pulled off the Manhattan miracle. He took over a terrible program. A new coach is allowed or will back in that era. Maybe you can run off five, 10 players. Maybe. And you can bring in some JUCOs or a transfer or two. Maybe. But what you primarily do is coach the guys you inherited, utilize them better than your predecessor. And then over the course of two, three, four years, then you replace them with guys you recruited. That was how you used to turn around a program. Bill Snyder, Nick Saban taking over somewhere, these guys couldn't snap their fingers and bring in 85 new players. Dion is not the mastermind of a miracle turnaround. He's a brand that Colorado purchased and gave a blank check to buy players and coaches. Let me repeat that. Deion Sanders is not the mastermind of some incredible turnaround. Deion, what we've seen from him in press conferences, what I see from him in 60 Minutes, he's just a brand that they bought to be the face of their program. He's an avatar. And then they said, Dion, here's... Jason Whitlock, man, you got it all wrong. Now, let me, let me dive deep into what you were saying and rebuttal to everything that you said. Bottom line is, Dion Sanders was hired to Colorado for a reason because the last coaching staff couldn't get it done. So they brought Deion Sanders in. 
So what Deion Sanders did was the coaching staff that got replaced, that coaching staff was responsible for the kids that was on that roster. They recruited them kids and they was not getting it done. So one thing that goes to show you that Deion's IQ for talent is off the chain because what you alleviated to was the 80 new players and it wasn't 80 new players it was 50 some new players that he handpicked that Dion persuade to come to Colorado to turn this thing around so Dion Sanders is not the puppet he is the mastermind behind the transformation of the Colorado Buffaloes because he got everybody on that team believing it the guys that he brought in the talent that he brought in them guys are responding to whatever Deion Sanders and that coaching staff is, you know, coming across to them guys and they're getting it done. One thing is, then you go on to say about the snap of the finger about Bear Bryant, the modern day Bear Bryant, and the other guy that you was talking about, Kansas. Do you notice the guys that he was talking about? They're not African Americans. He's giving them guys credit, but it's not giving Deion Sanders, an African-American coach, the credit that he deserved for turning this program around. Then he goes off to say that Colorado wrote him a check to go out and purchase the coaches and the players. That's absurd. So anything that Deion does now, Jason Whitlock has a problem with it. Basically, Jason Whitlock is calling Deion a hypocrite, and he said, you're a devil in disguise. And them words are crucial. Question a man's Christian beliefs and you got your own flaws. And one thing about Jason Whitlock is he tries to have it both ways and that's not gonna work. And the thing about it is Jason Whitlock, he says one thing and he goes out and does another. This is the same Jason Whitlock that is speaking all this negativity about Deion Sanders. In this picture, Jason Whitlock has invited these women that are half naked to sit on his lap and pose for a photo. Is that Christian like? Who's the one being a hypocrite now? You are the same Jason Whitlock that has invited them people in your circle and you're posing for a picture and you notice what type of women are sitting on his lap so that should tell you a lot and then another thing is with Dion he said if you listen to his fearless podcast he said that Dion has invited all the gangster moguls and the gangster rappers to Boulder Colorado no Dion is making a story in college football. Everybody is following the Colorado Buffalo. It ain't like Dion is inviting these people. These people are purchasing their own plane tickets and getting up to Colorado. Maybe they have some on-field passes. Maybe they get in the locker room, which is true. But everybody is following this feel-good story of Dion Sanders. And Jason Whitlock can't see it that way. Jason Whitlock is going to try to strike the iron while it's hot. And he's going to try to get the storyline. And he's going to try to debuke everything that Deion Sanders has done. And for you to question his Christian beliefs, on the picture I just showed, everybody will see that you the one being the hypocrite. So, guys, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. I know this is going to be an ongoing story. But like I said, please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend. We're going to start doing giveaways on this podcast. To all the audience members, we got prizes for you guys. Appreciate all your support. And like I said, drop your comments below. That's going to wrap up another episode of the Silver Ball Podcast. I'm your host and the man behind the mic, KSAP. Catch you on the next one. Deuces. Thanks for listening to the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. Be sure to subscribe. Like and share on all major platforms. Another one.